In this video, I'm going to introduce a new feature in JavaScript. It is async and await. There are two keywords introduced in JavaScript in 2017 as part of the ES8 specification. So far, we're all familiar of how to write asynchronous code in JavaScript using Axios. In this course, I highly recommend using Axios library to make asynchronous requests to the server side. In the title, I wrote async and await is the recommended way of making asynchronous requests. So what is the problem of the current way of making asynchronous requests using Axios? Everything looks good. For example, we're using axios.get, and once we get a response from the server, we're using .then. Now, if there's any problem, we're using .catch. So everything looks good. And why do we have to learn two new keywords? And what benefit or what advantage can we get from these two new keywords? Before we talk about why we're using async and await, let's kind of briefly review how we're doing things now. In other words, how we're making asynchronous requests using Axios now. Let me go to IntelliJ. Now I'm under 00 asynchronous.html. This is the example I showed you at the beginning of this lecture. So in this HTML, I'm making four axios.get requests. So this is the first one, second, third, and fourth. So let's take a look at the second one. Here, we're making a request by using this syntax, axios.get find all. So once the servlet on the server side receives this request, find all, the servlet will retrieve 50 users from database, serialize them into JSON format, and respond to the front end. Once the response is ready, this function here, the function here we passed as argument to this thin method, gets executed. This function in highlights is called a callback function. We're doing two things in one statement. We're defining the request, and also we're going to tell JavaScript what happened once the response is ready. Now, the first time I learned this, I don't feel very comfortable because this is very different from what I used to do. What I used to do in synchronous mode is I'm going to call this method get, and then I'm going to assign the returned value to a variable called response. I can do more things, you know, process response. For example, I can print it, I can get response.data, and so on and so forth. We're really used to this kind of uh, format or syntax. But here, you know, we're doing too much things in one statement. Oh, by the way, I'm going to delete this because this won't compile. Do we have a better way to write this statement? That's why we're learning async and await. So the reason we're using async and await is that using them will make our code, the asynchronous code, look more like the old school synchronous code, the one I just showed you. So they are well worth learning. Next, I'm gonna show you how we can modify or refactor the current way of making requests using async and await. Using async and await is super easy. Let me show you an example. And you can see this example in 11 async function.html under our project Ajax demo. Without using async and await keywords, our code looks like this. And you're all familiar with this. Axios.get URL dot then, and here is the callback function we pass as an argument to this then method. Then how do we refactor or rewrite this using async and await keywords? There are three steps. Step one, you have to put this code in a function. In this case, we define a function called getUserList, and this is the function body. And we're moving this axios.get in here. Step two, we have to add async keyword in front of function. Step three, we're going to put await keyword in front of this asynchronous call. Now we're assigning the return value of this asynchronous call to a variable, in this case, to a const variable. In other words, after we assign it, 
we can no longer change the value in response. Of course, you can use let. There's no problem. But here, we recommend using const. And the next line here is simply just print response.data. And they are equivalent. Here, we're not using async and await. And here, we're using async and await. So to summary, using async and await will not bring us additional power. In other words, it's OK if you are not using async or await. Nothing will change because they are equivalent. So what's the benefit of using async and await? Simply make the code easier to understand because here is the request. And when this request returns, when I say return, it means when the response is transmitted back from server to front end, we're going to assign the response to this response variable, and then we can do some processing afterwards. So this code looks more natural than this code because here there are two things in one statement. I want to emphasize that if you are trying to use async and await, then you must follow the three steps. Put the asynchronous code in a function and then add this keyword in front of function keyword and also here using await in front of this axios.get or axios.delete or axios.put or .post. The await keyword is only valid inside an async function. If you're using it outside an async function body, you will get a syntax error. That's a very, very common beginner's error. I'm sure most of students will make this error when you do homework. But remember, you have to put await statement inside an async function. Many students may still have questions about, is it really necessary to use async and await? So let me show you another example. We're still under 00 asynchronous.html. Here I defined four requests, the first one, second, third, and fourth. However, as you know that simply writing this in this order would not guarantee that the response would be printed this order. Maybe this one gets printed first, and then this one gets printed second, and the last one gets printed the third, and in the end, this guy gets printed. Writing the four request in this order does not guarantee we print response.data in this order. That's okay, because that's the nature of asynchronous. It really depends on the speed and the capacity of the server you're requesting. You may get response very quick, or you may get it very slow. But what if we want to enforce an order? So for example, we're making four requests like this, Ajax servlet, find all, find one, find its name, servlet. And I really want them to print it in this order. In other words, I don't care how slow this is, but before we print the response of the first request, we will never print the response of the second request. Next, I'm going to show you how we can enforce an order when we issue multiple Ajax requests. Now we're under 12 async multiple asynchronous jobs.html. I'm going to first do this without using async and await. And then I'm going to do this using async and await. And you can compare how easy and elegant to using async and await. All right, first, we're going to do this using dot then block. So here is the code. We're defining only one statement. So pay attention here. This is only one statement. What happened here is this is the very first request, axios.get ajax servlet. Then we're trying to chain one, two, three, four, four then blocks after it. So dot get, dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then. In this one statement, we're doing many things. So what happened here is we're making this request. When the response comes back, we're going to print the response. So this is the response to this request. And after that, we're making the second asynchronous request to find all. And here, this response is the response of this find all. Now, before we print the response to the second request, we will never execute the third request. And same thing here. Before we print the response to the third request, we will never call the fourth request. 
And in the end, the very last thing, we're printing the response to the very last request. And this is the way, this is one way to enforce an order. We will make multiple asynchronous requests. And this is the only way, okay? By chaining those thin blocks, okay? This is called a promise chain. It's tedious. It's not very easy to write. It's not very easy to understand because there are many, many meanings in only one statement, okay? It's very counterintuitive. Now let me show you how to use async and await to handle multiple asynchronous jobs to make sure we have an order. It's just super simple. That's it. First request, and we're gonna assign the return value. Here the return value is really in quotes because this is really returned from the server side. And we're gonna assign to response one. Now by adding a wait in front of axios.get, this one will be paused until the response comes back. In other words, if the response is not back, we will never execute the second in you know, line 35 or line 37. This one will be executed first, second, third, and fourth. This part is exactly equivalent to the first one, but as you can see how elegant it is to using async and await. My recommendation is if you're using Axios, using Axios with async and await. So that is becoming the norm now. Let me run it in browser. Okay, now before I run it, I want to, I want to mention that Remember, we deliberately add a five seconds delay in the service. We're gonna wait for five seconds before we can see the first result, and then we're gonna see the second, third, and the fourth results very quickly, because here there is a five seconds delay. Okay, I'm going to click this link. As you can see, five seconds. And this is the first, the response of the first request, second, third, and the fourth. And that's how we achieve an order when we issue multiple asynchronous requests. Before we wrap up async and await, let me talk about some scenarios that we really need to enforce an order among multiple asynchronous calls. For example, in the first request, we're making a request to server one to get some information about one user, okay? In the second asynchronous request, we're gonna use this user's information as some parameter to make the second request. In that case, we have to wait until the first request is done because we need the return value from first request as the parameter in the second request. But how can we make the second one wait for the, the first one? We can use either dot then, dot then, dot then, the old way, or using this await. So that's the scenario of why we need to enforce an order among some asynchronous calls.